Evening to one and all. Welcome again to another edition, yet another edition of DXB Today. Now, we might be in the first couple of weeks of 2024, but 2023 will be remembered as the year of sustainability. But what have we learned from that? Are we living more sustainable lives? How can we? lead more sustainable lives. Uh, hopefully we will give you and deliver a few answers tonight. Here is what's coming up. Our very own Mayfair heads down to San Sherpa to experience the ultimate eco adventure. Plus, we've got the one and only king of rap, Yo Yo Honey Singh, right here in the studio tonight. It's all very exciting, guys. I'm excited, I like my celebrities. It's all the S's tonight, is it not? It's uh, Yo-Yo Honey Singh and sustainability. Let's bring Superstars it all together. And Superstars and singing. Superstars, the lot. It's all <laughs> happening here on DXB today. Now, uh, looking forward to that one because big name now residing here in Dubai. Officially, we're breaking the news, guys. It's been <laughs> 10 days. Uh, so great to have him and very kind of him to join us here live in studio. Uh, a man who's been churning out music for many, many years. And it'll uh, be interesting to see what's next for Yo-Yo Honey Singh. Yes, definitely. And I know that Dina was wanting to uh, pitch herself as a backing dancer, I think. I feel him. like I have a few moves in me and you know, I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to be too old to be in a music video. So here's my chance. <laughs> Yo-Yo Honey Singh is already in the studio listening to us. So it's not only a new chapter for Yo-Yo Honey Singh, it's a new chapter for you as yeah. well. You know what? I believe him and I are the same age. We're like eight months apart or something. So It's written in know. the stars. Have <laughs> He might pity me. Um, our other big theme tonight is, of course, all things sustainability, because one of the big chats we had last year, whether it was uh, um, uh, during COP28 or throughout the year, was about being more sustainable. Uh, and that's all good and well during a year of sustainability, but the legacy part of it is the most important. So, did we learn to live more sustainable lives? I mean, I'm definitely more conscious of it. I think Full we stop. learned. <laughs> I think there's a lot of measures that have been ca being carried out. I mean, uh, we talk about the single use, single, how do you say it? Single pla use, use of plastic. plastic. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, no longer being allowed. Like, I don't know, I think about it now. Little things like that, carrying around my own water bottle, carrying around my own bags. And I think my kids are making it more conscious, conscious of everything. I think they are having it integrated into their education system. And I really do appreciate that because they put me to shame and I don't want them to put me to shame. Actually, just on the back of that, I was very proud of myself when I went into makeup today, wasn't I, Dina? I noticed. What were you carrying, Amy? I had a reusable coffee cup. <laughs> I was well very done. proud of myself. Well Thank done. you. Cheers. Little steps. Little steps. And that's little what it's all steps. about. And hopefully uh, throughout the show this evening, we'll be able to give you a little bit of an idea of some of those little steps you can take as we take inspiration from our guests. Yes, indeed. And on that note, speaking of taking inspiration from our guests, who is our guest host today? find out. Hi, I'm Ivana. I'm a sustainability specialist and entrepreneur and children's book author. I'm excited to be with you today on the show. Yes, Ivana will join us right here in just a second. But first, Mirtha went down to Sand Sherpa, the ultimate eco adventure in the city to experience wilderness off-road, the only tour operator in Dubai's incredible desert conservation reserve. This is Sand Sherpa. Let's take a look. We're here in the beautiful sand hills of Dubai with San Sherpa to see what it's like to camp in the natural wilderness of Dubai. I'm here with Rob Nicholas and Pete Berg, the founder and partner of San Sherpa. Hi guys, thank you for having us in this amazing wilderness. Such a pleasure, so happy to have you here. You're most welcome, thank you for coming. Basically, San Sherpa is a tribute to the Himalayan guides. I don't know if you've heard of Sherpas that basically take people up peaks like Mount Everest and work in the Himalayas. So what these guys are doing is they've got a very tough job, but they're essentially guiding people into new environments. Basically, we're leading people into the wilderness. We're educating them about what they can go and see and learn here. Uh, but at the same time, we, we're kind of, we're guiding them rather than the five-star service that you might find at a hotel. The idea is to kind of encourage self-sufficiency, to encourage enjoyment of the environment, but to get people actually hands-on enjoying the experience. <music> 
Sally who you met is in fact a Harris's hawk, which is slightly different to a falcon. And the different types of falcons that we get here now, for the Bedouin, um, let's, let, let's look at that quickly, is that traditionally they would get their birds from the wild. So they would trap them from the wild and they, these birds were migrating from Central Asia over the Middle East on their way to Africa. So on that migration they would catch them from the wild and then only use them for the winter months. And at the end of winter, they would release them back into the wild. A beautiful system, completely sustainable, yeah? The types of falcons they would catch were two types. One was a peregrine falcon, which in Arabic we call a shaheen. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was a seiko falcon, which we call a hur. This is basically, you know, the foundations for, you know, Dubai. So people should come here, they should see what this land looked like before human intervention. They should come and see some of the native flora and fauna that we can see basically everywhere around us and they should just escape, they should turn off. We often say at San Sherpa, watch the fire and not your iPad. And it's really a serious thing. If people come and they spend time with their family, they're in touch with nature, it's so beneficial for them and it's so beneficial for us and the, the amazing environment that we have to work with. So we just had an in-depth look into what it's like to camp in the Dubai wilderness. So if you wanna go outdoors and be one with nature, come check this out. Yeah, stunning. Well done to all the team down there at San Sherpa. I've been given a little uh, insight into their desert camp and it is rather special. Right now, uh, our co-host today is a former UN sustainability speci specialist on a mission to inspire a whole generation uh, healing humanity and the planet one child at a time through EduTech and her children's book series as well. Please welcome to the show, Ivana Primovic Ogbul, who joins us now live in the studio. Great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I suppose who better to ask than you uh, about the question we were just mulling over there. Did COP28 move the needle for us? Do you get the sense that people are leading a more sustainable life as a result? I believe so. I believe so, despite what we hear out there in the media. I believe that one of the most critical milestones we achieved with COP28 is really bringing education at the center of the debate. I still can't believe after so many years of the UN and development world that it took us 28 COP to bring education to really talk about sustainability with our young learners. So for me, that's a, a massive milestone. And I think that that will ensure that we take this conversation forward and we just don't go back to business as usual. So that's going to be the legacy, is it? I believe so. I believe so. So talk about education and, you know, for the youngsters. I know that you've got your children's book series. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what they cover, why you decided to take this path in becoming a children's author as well? Yeah. I, as, as I worked for the UN for over 12 years, what, we, what I realized, having had my own children and researching on what children are studying when it comes to sustainability, I realized that the work we do in the development sector has not translated to the materials for educators and for children. Incredible. Now, from our children working our way up to our own personal goals, we've been talking about how we're running the risk of kind of losing that momentum from COP28. What are some of the, per the changes that we can personally make that will also inspire our children and also be aligned with the curriculum and so forth? Just a few quick tips that you can give us. It's really about modeling. It's about being mindful on a day-to-day -day basis. I loved your, your micro steps and really incremental changes we do day-to-day, -day, like picking up the reusable bags, having the, the coffee mug carry with us. Children absorb what we do. And it's especially ages zero to six, there's no need for any talk about sustainability, just model on a day-to-day -day basis what we do and they'll pick it up. For ages six to 12, there is scope for conversations on how some of our choices impact our environment, impact people, imp impact economies. And it's really about being mindful and being being conscious of what we're doing day to day. So it's the attitude as well. It isn't just what we're physically doing, but it's about kind of just showing our kids and showing our people that we are, our people, our friends, our, our who, whoever's with us, that we're taking it into consideration. Absolutely. So yeah, these little things do make a difference, don't they? It is nice, because sometimes I feel like, what are, Tom, 
you want no, to No, I'm just saying, I think I'm picking up exactly what you're saying there about, I think it's that whole momentum thing, isn't it? Because we keep, you know, how many times have I used the word legacy in the show already today and things like that? But we keep falling back on that because that was such a foundation and a pedestal of COP28, but it's not legacy anymore, it's momentum. Because you momentum, need to keep yeah. that conversation rolling, don't you? What I believe that the Ministry of Education has done so well, they have started integrating the green curriculum into schools. So all our children will come back to us with the new things they've learned, with especially children 6 to 12. This is why I love this age group, is they really care about justice. They are interested in the world around them. Yeah. So they'll come and they'll tell you, if they see you doing something that is not in line with what they learned. So that's where the impact of education comes. We won't we, we will be pointed at oh, by yeah. our children if, if we're I, not doing if I, that. If I, if I get told off once more time for leaving the tap on whilst I'm brushing my teeth Thank of the very, evening. Absolutely. And I tell you what, you it's know. It's so powerful. It's, it's really powerful. <laughs> our children are our accountability agents. Now, Ivana, we are about to go to break, but just quickly, could you tell us where can we pick up one of your books? So they are quite handy. At the moment, at the Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. And I'm working with the Ministry of Education and with publisher here to make them available in UAE uh, to be purchased directly. All but right. at the moment, Amazon.com. Well, we're happy to have you with us. Don't you go anywhere because you're doing all the interviewing with us. But for now, it is time for a break. And after the break, we're going to find out more about the Kinder Life Sustainable Festival, which takes place later this month. Plus, the number one rapper across the Indian subcontinent. Yo, yo, honey, sing! It's joining us right here in the studio, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> 